Hi there, Steve Kaufman. Today, I want to talk about something that I think is very important, a question that I get all the time, and that is, how long does it take to learn a language? And I want to talk about that in terms of what I consider to be the three stages of language acquisition. Um, and so, let's start with that, stages of language acquisition. If you Google for stages of language acquisition, most of what you find will talk about the stages of language production. You know, initially can answer yes or no, can say a few short sentences, whatever. To me, language acquisition is not about language production. It's initially about how we acquire the language, how we get the language into us. So, uh, based particularly on my experience this last three, four months with Arabic and Persian, and as I contemplate getting into, let's say, Turkish next year, how long do I think it will take for Turkish? What will be my stages along the way of, a, a, you know, towards acquiring that language? All right. So, I looked at an article that I wrote quite a long time actually ago, quite a long time ago, and recently put up again on my blog where I talk about three stages of language acquisition. In the first stage, which I say takes 60 to 90 hours, call it three months at an hour a day, and, and of course this is going to vary depending on the language, but I describe in that article many years ago, many, only seven or eight years ago, exactly what I experienced with my Persian and Arabic. And that is that I need to listen often and repeatedly to simple stories. What I didn't know when I first wrote this article, or at least I wasn't aware of the mini stories, the point of view stories. I became aware of them when I was studying Polish and Piotr at realpolish.pl uses these very effectively. I then discovered that A.J. Hogue does this in English. And I discovered that these have been around, that some of the people involved in the, you know, uh, uh, what is it called? TPRS, Teaching Proficiency Through Reading and Storytelling, they have also used this technique. We have our 60 mini stories at Link. That's only one example of this point of view storytelling technique. But by listening to these many, many, many times and reviewing them on link and reviewing the words, I got a sense of the language. So I call the first stage, this 90 to 100 hours, I call it connecting with the language. That's all you have to achieve so that I have a sense of Persian. Now, depending on the language, it can be more than three months. In, in the case of Persian, three months even combined with Arabic I was able to connect with the language. I actually can say some things now. I know more or less how the language works, although there are fine points of grammar that I'm not aware of. Arabic is much more difficult. Arabic is more difficult because the grammar is more complicated, or at least more different from what I'm used to as a speaker of Indo-European languages. The writing system is more difficult, and I began sort of connecting with the Arabic script with Arabic so that by the time I got to Persian, I had an easier time reading. So depending on the language, it can be longer. But the first stage is connecting with the language and it is done through a lot of listening and reading and ideally content like our many stories at Link where the most common verbs of the language are used over and over again and a lot of the very common conjunctions and connecting words and phrases are used over and over again. So you naturally absorb the language. When I personally enjoyed having a tutor once a week in each of Arabic and uh, Persian, but it's not a condition. I think it's useful to do, but it's not a condition because you're mostly trying to get the language into you. So based on an hour a day, that's three months. It could be longer, it could be shorter, depending on how similar the language is and the writing system is to what you are familiar with. The second stage then, which I call getting comfortable with the language. Now here, again, it's largely input based because in my 
experience, if you are comfortable, if you can understand, if you have a high level of comprehension, if you have sufficient vocabulary, the output will come, will come as you have more opportunity or you create more opportunity to speak, you will improve your ability to speak, but you will then activate this passive knowledge, this comprehension, this vocabulary that you have acquired. So in the second stage now, I may still continue as with Persian and uh, Arabic, I could continue listening to my mini stories. In fact, I'm even doing that, that now with my uh, Russian and Ukrainian in order to get a better sense of the structure and the case endings and the verbs of motion and this kind of thing. But I need to expand my vocabulary. I need to expand, you know, what I am comfortable with, what I understand. If, for example, in Arabic and Persian, if I get an article, for example, in Arabic from Al Jazeera and there's 40, 50 percent unknown words there, that's not comfortable. In fact, it's difficult for me to read and listen to. So ideally in the second stage, which is twice as long as the first stage, if the first stage was three months, the second stage could very well be six months. And here, ideally, I would look for conversations. So to some extent, the podcasts are conversations. But a lot of the podcasts that I've been listening to, they have a lot of sort of special vocabulary. And while if I continue doing it, I would eventually acquire that vocabulary, let's say it's politics or economics. And so they, they, these texts would become more comfortable to me. However, I felt with Arabic, if I could find an intermediate level of content, maybe many stories about economics and politics where the vocabulary repeats, although the nouns will not repeat as often as the verbs, which repeat more often and in a sense are more important to our ability to, our exp to express ourselves. So ideally, maybe we should start our link podcasts up again, where we had two people talking to, uh, to each other in Italian or French or, or uh, Japanese, so that you get sort of a, a, a natural conversation, but then spoken first and then transcribed, not something that's written and then read. So this becomes very lively. It's interesting. You're sort of eavesdropping on a conversation. And yet, if you're at link, you have then the ability to read the transcript, save the words, and after a while, if it's the same two people talking to each other about everyday life or things that are of interest to them, a lot of the vocabulary will repeat. Another thing that I very much enjoyed with uh, Chinese, and to some extent I found some of this in Russian, is, you know, um, books on subjects of interest to me, nonfiction, which is usually easier than literature, nonfiction, history, geography, but with a simplified vocabulary so that again as i am increasing my comfort level with the language i'm not facing you know 50 percent unknown words so if it's possible to find this sort of intermediate level of material and then gradually migrate towards genuine authentic material which you know i pushed myself to do in korean and i pushed myself to do in romanian and i pushed myself to do in greek and in Arabic, but it was just a little too difficult for me. So I wasn't getting to that comfort level. But ideally, that you would have six months to work at material that is no longer simple mini stories, but it's not quite the full blown authentic material. Or you simply plow into the authentic material and just, you know, suck it up. Uh, you want to get there, you're interested in it, there's a lot of unknown words. You save these words, you listen to the audio and gradually you'll become more comfortable. But so there is this period then of becoming comfortable with the language. So that, in my opinion, is another six months. So now we're at nine months, three months predominantly with the many stories. Then the fourth to the ninth month plowing now into either intermediate material or interesting authentic material so that you can increase your comfort level with the language. At this stage, I would normally increase my interaction with a tutor. I might even go to twice a week because now I'm starting to acquire enough vocabulary that I can actually talk about things that are interesting. And of course, at link, I get a report from the tutor with the words and phrases that I struggled with. And then I study these as content. If I'm lucky, the tutor gives me an audio file to listen to as well. 
So where we are at nine months. Now, the next stage I simply call constant improvement because there is no perfection, but you are now sufficiently comfortable in the language that you can listen to almost anything of interest or read anything of interest and continue to acquire vocabulary to pay attention to aspects of the language and therefore to continue to improve. And this can go on for as long as you have time to spend with that language. And I think once you achieve that level, in other words, of comfort, comfort with the language, you are now launched. So you can go as far as you want in the language. Now, what about grammar in all of this? Or what about fine points of pronunciation? Such as the conversation we had the, day, the other day about pitch in Japanese. You know, when I started Arabic, there was all kinds of complicated explanations about different types of Arabic verbs. Um, and in, in any language, you're going to find this. If I started in the Turkish, there's going to be a lot of explanation about Turkish grammar, Turkish pronunciation. Most of these explanations are very difficult to, they're more intimidating than anything else because they describe something that the learner has as yet no experience with. And therefore, I think it's far better to let the learner experience the language, notice certain things or not notice certain things. And then when the learner is curious about some aspect of Arabic grammar or curious about pitch, if they're curious about pitch, then they can go in and read up on it. And it'll be, you know, dealing with something that they already have some familiarity with. But it is not the main path to a uh, sort of fluency in a language. The main path to fluency is letting the language come into you. And I think that is done in these three stages. Nowhere in my three stages do I try to guess what the learner is able to say. Uh, you know, in stage one, they can answer simple questions. In stage two, they can talk about their family. In stage three, they talk about the weather. I, I think that's meaningless. If the learner has gone through these three stages of language acquisition, they will acquire more and more vocabulary, a better and better sense of the structure of the language, and they will gradually be able to use this. But the focus is on, in my opinion, on what we can acquire rather than what we can do, because we will be able eventually to use this, that which we have acquired. We need only increase our opportunity to use it. And so as I progress in the language, I would perhaps talk three times a week with a tutor maybe, and then at some point go to the country. But I would go to the country once I have already achieved a level of comfort in the language so that I can take full advantage of being there. So there you have it, you know, uh, nine months to a year gets you to that comfort level. It could be longer for Arabic or Chinese. It could be shorter if you're a Portuguese speaker learning Spanish, but that's roughly what it is, in my opinion, and I look forward to hearing from you, and I apologize for the long video. Bye for now.